Vale Baba Ki Jai Jagdambe Mata Ki Jai Hare Kandashvari Mata Ki Jai So here we are back in the temple to do some chanting and have a discourse. And we'll start with Jai Ganesha.
Will you get a Kleenex for me? Mother with a thousand names. <laughs> Hard to have just one. Hard to exactly.
Mathematik ki? J. Unterricht bei den Mathematik ki? J. You want to do one more mother song? Quick, do you have a choice? Anybody have a choice? Steve, do you have a choice today? Oh, we've got some hands up. Do you like that one, J Ma? J Ma? I can't see that far. You're going to have to give me some more. <laughs> She's pointed to um, number 23, Jay Ganesha. Oh, Jay Ganesha again. I think we're going to do one to the mother. Yes. What is your request? Um, can we do J Ma? J Ma? Sure. part of that means? It means mother who makes us so happy brings us much ananda, which is bliss. So see if this song makes you feel so happy inside.
think that's a great idea. You can hardly wait. You know, like you said yesterday, it was sort of a challenging moment when we ended the story. Maybe you didn't hear it, but I heard you told you a little bit. So, the young prince, Sudarsana, arrived, and um, he was going to come to the Swayambara, it's called, where um, the beautiful princess is supposed to pick her husband from among so many very beautiful kings and princes of the whole country that wanted to marry this beautiful princess. But because he had been raised in the, in the jungle, with, at an ashram. He had no money, he had no family anymore because he got run out of his kingdom by his younger brother's um, grandfather. So, where were we? Oh yes, uh, we're right here where it said, but the king growled, the jackal doesn't dare eye the lion's prey. Why is Sudarshan in here at all? The Kshatra doesn't live by fine words, but by the sword. And this angry grandfather, King, who is the grandfather of the other prince, Satrajita, uh, stalked out of the big assembly. And he stalked away from the other king, saying Yudhijita was intent on killing this young prince, Sudarsana, who came from the in the jungles with the, who had been raised at an ashram, the other kings went to Savahu, their host, and they asked the Lord of Kashi, why is Sudarsana here? Do you make a mockery of this Swayambara? Yudhijit means to kill him. The king of Kashi said, my daughter has set her heart on him to be her husband. How many times I begged her to forget the puffer, but she does not listen. I am helpless, my lords. Sashikala, my daughter, called Sudarshana here, not I. The king of Kerala said, let Sudarshana be fetched. We will ask him what he intends to do. Okay? So Sudarshana, the young prince who was raised in the ashram with a muni because he had to hide away from his um, half-brother and his the, the half-brother's grandfather, is now being called before all these other kings. Sudarshana was sent for and came before the glittering throng of rulers of the earth. He stood quietly there, not speaking, until one king said to him, this is a swambara for royal kshatras, royal kings and princes. The most powerful princes on earth are here to vie for the princess's hand. We have all come with our armies some of us are ready to do battle for this beautiful princess, Sashikali. How have you come here unattended, bringing only your mother with you? Another said, you have no kingdom, no army or wealth. How do you belong in this company? You are a hermit. Tell us how you dare come to Kashi. Sudarshana had a smile on his face. In a soft voice, he said, my lords, all that you say is true. I have no kingdom, no legions, no friends, or wealth. I heard of the Swayambara, and I came to watch it with no special purpose. But my lords, I did not come on my own, but because the Divine Mother, Devi Bhagavati, told me to come. The Devi, who is my goddess, is all of yours as well. I have no enmity with any of you. But if you decide to make an enemy of me, she who is the cause of all causes, the mother of the universe will protect me. I only do what she asks of me. My life is in her hands and the one who spins the wheel of fate. But the king said, what you say is true, but Yudhichita means to have your head. Sudarshana laughed, he said, a man is born into this world by his karma, and by faith alone does he leave it when his time has come. Not a moment before his time comes can any man be killed by any king or even by the devas. It is only Kal, time, who creates and destroys a man. 
I am a bhakta of the Devi, from whose hands time flows. She protects me, and I fear neither Yudhachita nor any other man. The king saw how determined he was, and the best of them were secretly very pleased. The next morning, Sabahu ushered in his royal guest from the, into this big assembly that he had built for this Swayambara. Such a resplendent assembly of kings and princes took their places. Silks and jewels, past compare, shone in the shafts of sunlight that fell through the lofty windows. Then a thousand conches sounded at once, so it seemed the very earth trembled at their, back, back, at their sound. The auspicious time had arrived. In some excitement himself, King Sabahu made his way through the passages of his great palace and knocked on his daughter's door. Sashikala, her, his daughter, opened that door in awe. She was more beautiful than her father had ever seen her before. She had just bathed and put on her resin and silks and ornament, ornaments that were heirlooms handed down from the ancient mothers of her family. She looked like a goddess stepped down briefly into the world of mortal men. Her father stood before her breathtaking to see how exquisite his daughter was. Sabahu said, come child, take up the garland. You will set around your husband's neck. All the princes and kings are waiting for you. But the princess said, I will not go to this wild bar. The Sasha said that only a desolate woman parades herself in the eyes of so many men, for they all have one thing in their heart, and it's not very nice. And with them gazing at me, my chastity will be forfeited. Am I a loose woman that so many men must cast their eyes over me and think how desirable I am? I do not care for this way, Umbara, Father. I have already given my heart to the prince I will marry. This garland is only for Sudhashana. If you love me, choose an auspicious day and Lagya, and give me to the prince that I love. Sabahu was, saw the tears in her child's eyes, and he knew that her heart was true and was made up. He clasped her in his arms to comfort her, but then he thought, what will I do now? The kings had come with their armies, and I cannot face them all by myself. As for Sudarshana, he had not one soldier to fight for him. Anxiously, the king made his way back to the Saba, where all the kshatras, all the kings, waited. As bravely as he could, Sabahu said, My lords, though I beg my daughter, and her mother implored her as well, she will not come to this Swayambara. I don't know what to do and I throw myself upon your mercy. I am prepared to give you all such gold and jewels as will satisfy you in return for the trouble you have been put to. My lords, my Sasha Kali is still a child, as you see by what she does. If I punish her or force her to come out here, I fear she might kill herself. I beg you, think of her as if she was your own daughter and forgive us both. Perfect silence fell on the assembly and it was a sympathetic quiet, for the kings had been moved by what Sudarshana had said to them earlier. But Yudhichita, their grandfather, eyes burned crimson and roared, Sabahu, you fool, is this the time to tell us this? Are you an idiot as well that you can't anticipate this? And I suppose you mean to give your daughter to that penniless Sudarshana after making fools of the rest of us. But I will not stand for it. I will kill you first, witless king, then Sudarshana, and my grandson, Suchichita, shall marry your daughter, Sashikali, over her father's dead body, if need be. Listen to me, Seba, Sabahu. A man must think of family, honor, wealth, and equality, and he gives his daughter in marriage. Marriage is not a matter of a young girl's whim of the day. We both know that and so do all these kings. You and I have been friends for many years. Let's reason prevail on you, Sabahu. Fetch your daughter here, and let her choose any of the kings for her husband, and I am content, any except Sudarshana, whose life I will not spare today.
and it seemed that the that you Yudajita had swayed most of the other kings because they began to murmur among themselves that Sabahu had indeed made fools of them. Sabahu burnt, burnt, bowed his head and said, I will ask my wife to speak to Sashika. He went and told his wife what had happened. The queen saw how distraught her husband was. And they went to Sashikala. And her mother said, if you insist on being stubborn, Yujijita means to kill your father and Sudarshana. You are still young, my child. You don't understand the ways of the world. I beg you, give up your obstinacy and marry any other prince but Sudarshana. Save your father's life. And the queen wept before her daughter. But Sashi Kali said, Father, marry me to Sudarsana at once, and then turn us both out of your city. At least you will be safe then, and fate's purpose will be fulfilled, whatever she intends. I can never give up Sudarsana any more than I can pluck my heart from my body and then hope to live on. Go now, gentle father, tell the kingdom Kings, the Slyambara has been postponed until tomorrow, and tomorrow let them be guests at my wedding to Sudarshana. Sashikali took her father's hand and said, My lord, it is the Devi who has decided that I will belong to Sudarshana and no one else. She will protect us from all these kings. Their power is nothing before hers. Her voice was low as she added, And if Bhagavati so decides, I will die at Sudarshana's side rather than betray my love. Suddenly, the king, Sabahu, also felt inexplicably calm, as if someone unseen had plucked his anxiety from him. He embraced his daughter, then went back to the Slayambara, to the assembly, and announced, There will be no Slayambara today. I have decided my daughter shall be married tomorrow instead. My friends, bear with me until then. Return to your camps now, and we shall meet again tomorrow. Perhaps I will devise a trial of strength or skill for the princes in the night, and let the one who succeeds win my daughter's hand. Until tomorrow then, my lords. And Sabahu swept out of the assembly. He sounded so confident that Yushchita and the others felt sure that he had persuaded his daughter to change her mind. They left the city for their royal tents pitched outside the Kashi, each one surrounded by its own army. Meanwhile, in a sequestered apartment in the very heart of the king's palace, Frenzy's preparations were underway for a secret wedding. Sudarshana and her mother and his mother had been fetched, and the and the prince from the forest was being clothed in the finest silks. Not far from the apartment, a delightful princess was being adorned to be a ravishing young bride. The Bourbonas and, and Sabahu's palace had hastily found an auspicious time for the wedding. When the time arrived, Sudarshana was led to the wedding chamber and made to sit on the Devi. He was giving Archmanan sweets. Um, two pieces of silk, two golden ear studs with jewels. The sacred fire was kindled, and Sashi Kali was fetched in by the older woman of the court. When Manorama saw the princess, tears of joy filled her eyes. Sashi Kali was as lo lovely as Kubara's daughter. The bride and groom sat before the fire side by side. The homa was performed and the young couple circulambulated the fire. Then it was the hour for gifts, and the king gave Sudarshana many, many thousands of horses and chariots and elephants, all decked in ornaments, a hundred um, maids to be his daughter's companions, a thousand soldiers, and much wealth. The Lord of Kashi came to Manorama. So Manorama is the mother of Sundarshana. And bowing deeply to her, she, he said, O oh, Queen, I am your servant now. Tell me what I can do for you. The tears escaping her soft eyes, Manorama said, I have no words with which to thank you, but I see that there is no king in all of Brahvasha as noble as you are, Sabahu of the Great Heart. Smiling, Sabahu said, 
rule my kingdom from now on, Manorama, and I will be your servant. Or stay on in Kashi with your son and let him have half my kingdom. Then a shadow crossed his face and he said gently, but I must try and appease the others now, and if they will not be pacified, we must fight them. But I have no fear, victory will belong to the side that has Dharma with it and the Divine Mother's blessings. Manorama said softly, let fear have no hold over your heart, noble king. I have seen today a miracle today, and faith fills my heart. I am certain now that with the Divine Mother's grace, my son will have his rightful kingdom back one day, Iodia that is rightfully his. Then Sabahu and Manorama sat talking until daybreak, and then the king who camped outside Kashi heard the news that Sashikali and Sudarshana had been married in the night. Sabahu deceived us. We will kill him and Sudarshana as well and take Kashi for our own. And Sashikali. Even as they spoke, a serene Sabahu arrived in their midst with his guards and ministers. Silence fell over the other kings. They stood glowering at their host. Sabahu folded his hands to them, bowed, and said, My lords, be kind enough to join us for a banquet to celebrate my daughter's wedding. Friends, nothing I said could change your mind. I had to give her to Sudarshana. The thing is done now, and I beg you to forgive me if I have caused you offense and to come to my palace and bless the young couple and eat with us. But the angry king said, we have already eaten. There are other matters we must attend to now. They spoke with each other with they spoke with such menace that fear gripped Sabahu, and he went back quickly to his city. Some of the other kings, led by Yudhichita, decided they would blockade Kashi, and when Sudarshana emerged with his bride, they would kill him and take Sashikali for themselves. Some of them decided they would stay to watch what happened. So what do you think happened? Anybody have an idea? Yeah. What? I have an idea. What's your idea? Um, usually things end up good. Take off your mask just a little bit. Usually things end up good. Things are good. Usually things turn out good. That's a great way, and I think they do. And you know who's helping in this story? The Divine Mother. So. She's going to stay alive <laughs> a little bit. Good. That's very beautiful. So they, they go to leave, and um, it's blocked by all the enemies. What? They, they, Sudarshana and his new wife, Sashi Kali, are going to leave the city now, and they're going to go back to the ashram where Sudarshana was raised because they want to get the advice and blessing of the Muni that lives there. But it's all blocked. Yujajita and his son, Satyajita, um, are blocking the way, and they start uh, shooting arrows at them, and um, so um, Sudarsana also, you know, re sends back arrows at them, um, but suddenly a hush fell on the field, and both armies froze in the ranks, so there was a war starting, and all of a sudden, silence. Yudhichita and Satrajita froze on their horses as their horses reared in alarm, winning at the strange apparition which had materialized between the two forces, an immense lion, and upon the golden beast's back rode a shimmering goddess, her luster like another sun risen on the earth. She rode her lion between the two armies, daring anyone to approach her. Sudarshana opened his eyes and murmured, Look, Sashi Kala, the Devi has come to protect us. Sabahu stood in trance. Yudhichita roared, Who is this woman who rides on a lion? What does she want here? Not a good question. Huh? At that moment, the lion gave a roar that drowned every other sound on the field. Horses and elephants bolted, and in a moment, there was a channel cleared through Yuchichita's legions, a way along which Sudarshana now fearlessly drove his chariot. 
You to cheat her roared. Shall we let a mere woman on a lion frighten us? Kill them, and kill the upstart Sudarshana too. And he plunged at Sudarshana his bow, fluttering arrows, and Satyajita beside him. Sudarshana held them both off for a while, then suddenly the Divine Mother was at his side on her lion. Yuchichita shot his arrows at her as well, and Suchichita did too. The crimson Devi smiled. She raised her own bow in one of ape hands. With another, she loosed a volley at the Anani. In a blur, both Yuchichita and Satyajita, that's the grandson, were dead. Their heads struck off by the goddess's crescent-tipped shafts. Suddenly, it seemed a thousand babies stalked the field of war in a thousand dreadful guises. The enemy par perished, or many of them also ran, ran away screaming. King Subhadu, remember Sashikali's father, leapt down from his chariot and prostrated himself before the Divine Mother. Again and again, he lifted his head and set it down in the dust at her holy feet. He said, Mother Jagad Jagadambe, I have no words for which to praise you, Bhavani, unworthy as I am. Today I have seen you with my very eyes. I see how you protect your devotees. O oh, Devi, you have come yourself to save Sudarshana's life. O oh, Mother, transcendent one, I lay my head at your feet, Mother. Please bless me. The Devi smiled tenderly and said to Subahu, King of Dharma, of good works, name what boon you would like for me. So that's a favor. A boon is a favor. What more could any, he said, what more could any man want than seeing you like this with his mortal eyes? Not the kingdom of the devas is more precious than what I have been given today. I beg you, Devi, for the boon of Vati. Let my faith in you never waver, and let your grace be upon my city forever. Bless me, Sri Durga, that I will be your devotee forever. The Devi said, I will remain here in Kashi always, good Sabahu for as long as Kashi stands upon the face of the earth. Just then, Sudarshana, the young prince, arrived and fell at the goddess's feet, tears of ecstasy flowing down his face. He worshipped her. Mother of the sky, mother of mercy, you have saved me today, though I have such scant faith in you. Let me be your servant from this day, Devi. Command me, what shall I do with my life now? Where shall I go? Smiling, the Divine Mother said, Have you forgotten Iodia, your father's city, Sudarshana? Go to Iodia now and rule as king of the Kosalas, for that is who you are. Worship me always, Sudarshana, and I will carry for you and yours. Keep an idol, um, uh, idol an image of me in your kingdom. Pray to it three times a day, and I will be with you. Celebrate the Divine Mother's Navratri Puja, for it is mine. Fear nothing, Sudarshana. You are my bhakti, and I love you. Do you like that ending? Was it the good ending you thought it was going to be? <laughs> I think that's a pretty good ending. Huh? That's a pretty good ending. A pretty good ending, and it yeah. tells it tells us a great lesson mm -hmm. that we can always pray to the Divine Mother for help, even in situations that look a little hopeless, like certainly did in this situation. All these armies from all the kings and princes of the whole land faced again just Sudarshana, who had no army, and his new father-in-law, who had just one army. But she took care of them, right? But he was very clear on, on um, praying to her. So right now we're going to do a little Kumari celebration. Do you remember last year when we gave you girls um, beautiful bags of things? Mm -hmm. 
Is that okay, Mama? If we, yeah, if we, do you want to, why don't you come sit up near Baba? So this tradition is a part of the Navratri. And in years past, we'd have many, many children. All of the children. Yes. <laughs> Gloria was one of those children yes, many years like ago. Yes, But, uh, with the COVID and everything, everything's a little different. Soon we'll have more and more people coming again, I hope. But uh, in the meantime, we're glad that you're here and we have some special things for you. Let me put my mask on, excuse me. <clears throat> so the tradition is that lucky ladies, Lucky children, they're so, you so recently come from heaven, being born, that you still remember a lot of that. Do you remember how, how easy it is to be the Divine Mother? And so we brought you some clothes that the Divine Mother has worn. I just thought you might like them. And I think I have a head going in here so that it can stay on you. Are you okay if Gloria helps you? Okay. I know that you probably even recognize these saris that Mother used to wear. And here's a headband for that one. And then here's the mala present. Get out the, there's a bag of beautiful bangles. Oh. Jewelry. And just like we dress the mother every morning. You like those? Can you get them on your little lips? Perfect. You want to put one on each or all? Silver and gold, my God. So beautiful, yeah. And this is a sandalwood mala. And so, do you know how to do japa? So I have a mala that Babaji gave me in 1981, way before your mother was even born. Nope, I was two. Oh, I was two years old. And I do japa on it every day. Japa means repeating the name of God. So we can teach you how to hold it. And you could say, Om Namah Shivai, Om Namah Shivai, or if you have another prayer you like to say, you go all the way around, and that's called one world japa, but then you can also wear it. Our Nana has a lot of japa. You're, you're, and we're going to her after. Perfect. And in case you need, you all give money to the... I just got two prayers. You yeah, got two fairy money because you lost one of your teeth, and now you got divine mother money and a cute bracelet. <laughs> Those are such, so cool. Those are very cool. And in case you get bored, that's sort of a joke. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> There's even one for you with gold. And some sweets? Some sweets and some sunglasses. <laughs> You need sunglasses? Oh, it matches your new outfit. Although I can't believe she got my favorite colored cloak and I got her favorite colored cloak. Oh, great! Is that gonna work? You can, you can. <laughs> oh, look, you have one too. Do you know how that works? Mm -hmm. Look at that. <laughs> you have a lot of them. Yeah, like guys have some little clippies. Yeah, here's some things for your hair. I have some bindies for your hair. Uh, a little friendship bracelet. Oh my god, Sissy, we have friendship Yeah, I look right here. <laughs> and here's... And little hair ties. Yeah, here's some hair ties and clips. I'll keep those in here. And you guys have a little... <laughs> a little horn. <laughs> and now here's a bindi for you. Although you already have your sunburn on. Do you want one on or do you want to save it? No, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Not right now. Okay. Because I'm not. I want to save mine. Okay. Here, put everything back in your bag. Thank you. Thank you. I really need to get these good ones. Oh. <laughs> but can you sit right there, uh, pretty dressed up? I can Just for a little bit longer, and then we'll take it off. <laughs> I'll get a picture. Are you gonna get one? Great. Right. Do you want to be in one? I'll let you. Sure, I'll be in with you. Here, I'll straighten out your mother. And bring your hair a little bit there. Okay, Kamari. You look so cute. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> so, we really treasure our little divine mm -hmm. mothers and fathers that come here. You're always teaching us. Teaching us? Yes, you. <laughs> By your love and joyfulness. And excitement. Excitement. Hope. All of those things. Yes, thank you. Now we're going to go up and see Divine Mother here. If you want to come up and pranam to her, you're welcome to. And there's Baba and Shiva and the Divine Mother. Darshan. Yeah. So thank you for being with us and may all our prayers join together. And may we always remember to be to trust and pray to our divine mother. Bole Baba Kiche.